So many times I hear talking about investing on a budget. If you don't have enough money for a booster box, you can buy three pack blisters or sleeved boosters. But in reality, using circular data, are they actually good investments? Or will you have to sacrifice some of your returns? Hello people from the world, it's Farah here, your favorite European Pocket Shooter, and uh, today, as you can see, we're going to talk about auxiliary products. So we're going to compare the soy performance of booster boxes against some of the hottest uh, auxiliary products on the market, as far as I can see here on YouTube, those being 3-pack blisters and sleeved boosters. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, many PokeTubers here, when they have to make a video about investing in a budget, so on and so forth, um, I think it's completely uh, BS, uh, investing on a budget. Uh, it, it, it's kind of like, a, it's contradictory, like you invest on a budget. If you need to budget to invest, then probably shouldn't be investing in the first place, right? Uh, you, you could argue you can invest with little money, which is fine, uh, but uh, you know, if you don't have money, you can invest. That's as simple as that. But that's not why we're here. We're here to look at historical data, look at uh, no one here on YouTube uh, has done, look at uh, as many uh, data points as we can, and uh, let's see what has happened in the past. Now, I'm a big advocate of the fact that uh, these type of uh, tools that we're going to use, uh, particularly for today's video, are not good predictors of the future. There are different tools you can use. They're much more complex. So there's two reasons why I don't use them. Number one, I don't see them being as relevant in the Pokemon market uh, because of um, X and Y reasons. Number two, if you don't know, I'm a mathematician. If I went to you know explain those tools, just put them out there, spit them out. First of all, you would need to do some research uh, and have a mathematical background to understand if I'm talking BS. Uh, second of all, that's which is correlation number one. Uh, if I want to explain them, uh, it, it, it just would it would take me hours, right? Because I would have to start over, which doesn't mean uh, you don't understand them. It just means that it, it, for the purpose of this channel, I don't see them being um, useful. But the purpose of the channel is making you aware that such tools exist. Um, and uh, these that we're going to look at today are not predictors of the future. They cannot predict the future with a, a decent amount of accuracy and none um, of the other people you watch most likely will be able to do so, especially if you only compare one data point. So if you go, okay, year over year, this is what happened. That's uh, even like trying to predict using one data point year over year. Good luck. So that being said, data, data, data has been taken from TG Player. That's TG Player prices. And as I mentioned, we're not going to use one data point. Uh, that would be too easy, and I don't like easy. Uh, we're going to use weekly prices over one year, which equals 52 data points. As simple as that. So remember, when you're going to look at expected return, expected volatility, that is weekly data. So that's what you should expect on a weekly basis, right? Uh, so metrics we're going to use to rank these things to try to draw some conclusions. Returns, obviously. Uh, which return have I used? Uh, you may ask Barrett, what do you mean? Which returns have you used? Well, there's different ways to calculate returns. I use a simple one you could use, which is I think it's the most realistic uh, that could apply to Pokemon because uh, you usually try to use different returns based on uh, the situation you're in. For this specific scenario, Pokemon, I think uh, the one I use are more than uh, enough, which are the simplest we can use. Uh, price at, at time is equal 1, minus price at times equal 0, over price at times equal 0. Now, volatility is going to be our measure of risk. That's how we, uh, and uh, a big part of the financial world, had decided to measure risk. Volatility. Volatility, what is volatility? Uh, if you don't know what volatility is, then I recommend you watch uh, this video. I should be popping up somewhere. Um, and that is uh, basically the part one of this video, which is when I went when I compared uh, booster boxes against CTB against the stock market. There, I went into more depth in some mathematical tools that have been used and will be used today. So that's what it is. Now, if you must send deviation to know what that is, uh, then you can just uh, take a look at that video, which I recommend, it, especially if you're interested. Uh, have booster boxes or ETBs outperform the S&P and at what cost? 
Uh, and then our last metric is going to be return over volatility, which is um, by all means a risk adjusted measure, which makes the most sense, right? Uh, if you want to make returns, you want to see, okay, but what's the risk associated to that return? If I can make a thousand percent, what is the amount of risk that I should be undertaking to obtain that return? It's not all oranges and flowers. Please about performance in case you missed the other video, which again, you should have, have been missed because I mentioned it. So you should already be watching that instead of this. Uh, good job that you are a lawyer viewer. Uh, please subscribe. I need your watch time. I, I'm, I'm the only honest uh, YouTuber out there. I, I need your watch time. Uh, give it to me and you will be rich. It's a promise, 100% guarantee. So Bushy Box performance, as you can see, simply, uh, I go into more, more detail into that video, but as you can see, the best performing one was Evolving Skies, 1.15% expected return on a weekly basis. Once again, uh, yearly data, so 52 data points. And if you look at the ratio, which is what we just talked about, the reward to risk ratio, what we want is the greater number possible. And once again, uh, Evolving Sky uh, would have provided us with that number so the best risk adjusted measure uh, so all these guys or the outperformer is does that mean it's gonna happen again uh, a year from now uh, not really and uh, funny enough i mentioned and it's good that i mentioned it did i say one year from now would that be accurate so uh, think about this i don't i don't know if anyone uh, tells you um, has told you this or if you know this but this is very important uh, when it comes to predicting right so if we take weekly prices and we try to make a model with weekly prices. So the time frequency is going to be weekly. So the length of that series is going to be 52, right? 52 weeks. And uh, what we can do here is we can try to predict one week worth of data because we use weekly prices. If you were to use yearly prices, then we could enhance yearly returns. Then we could have tried to predict one year in the future. Obviously, if you do that with one data point, uh, you are either uh, generally don't know what you're doing or you're just uh, uh, extremely misleading to your viewers. Not up to me to say which one. Uh, we're doing it here with two data points. That is not enough. Uh, we will need more. So this has no predicting power. However, I think it's great for internet purposes. It will give you a decent, in my opinion, uh, view of what has happened and uh, perhaps what could happen who knows so that I wanted to say out so if we use weekly prices then we can predict for a week in the future that what we will be doing that would no would this is what we implicitly would be doing trying to predict for next week hope that's clear if not as always let me know down in the comments or just join the discord which by the way you will find this powerpoint as well as the other one about the S&P uh, as well as the excel sheet with the returns uh, on uh, the discord for free so I, I recommend you join the discord uh, if, if you want if you don't too bad so now into the the hot stuff the hot part finally uh, some juicy corner bear you bought it for 69 minutes and now you finally give us the gist Sorry, I talked too much. So returns, as you can see here, I did the homework for you. So this is the best product. What does it mean? So here we're all considering returns. We're like, uh, so here we are Timmy, I'm Timmy. And I say, oh, I'm an evil Timmy. I don't care about risk. I, I only want big, I only, I only want to get rich. I only care about returns. Fine, you can do that. So if we only consider returns, here we have, as you can see, we have free pack blisters sleeved and booster boxes best product will indicate which one has performed the best over the data set which i talked about the data set to oblivion you're probably bored at this time so simply as you can see we have booster boxes for base sleeve for rebel clash three pack blisters which is the only one that appears on the list the only time three pack blisters has how perform the other product was for Dr. blaze fifth voltage sleeved Booster boxes for both battle styles and chilling rain. Sleeve for evolving skies, which is quite interesting. Uh, as you can see here, this should be multiplied by 100 to get a percentage, so 1.4%, a weekly expected return. Booster boxes then from Fusion Strike till Silver Tempest. So, here, what can we draw? Some conclusions ready. Well, what happened in the past, which again doesn't mean it's going to happen in the future, stay aware from everyone that uh, claims that. 
uh, especially using weaker motor than this one, have been booster boxes. So booster boxes ha have outperformed using return as the only metric, the rest for most cases. And three pack blister have outperformed the other two products only once. That's what happened. Now, we'll go back into some more uh, conclusion after the other two metrics. Volatility, risk. Now, here the setup is, you're the average Timmy and you're like, well, I don't know if I want to invest in Pokemon. What if I lose all my money? Uh, is there any way I can invest in uh, something that is as stable as possible? Uh, I don't really like risk. I cannot tolerate risk. Is there any data that can uh, help me to see what has been the least volatile product? That's the table for you. So once again, same thing. I won't go over that again. Uh, best product. So the one with the lowest volatility. Booster boxes for us, base and rebel clash. Three black blisters, once again, for darkness of blaze. So it looks like the booster box for darkness of blaze was useless. I'm just kidding. Uh, Viva voltage booster boxes, sleeved for battle styles and ceiling rain. Three pack blisters for evolving skies. Future strike, sleeved. Brilliant stars, three flex blisters, astral, sleeved, and then for lost origin and civil tigers, once again, three pack blisters. Now, we only saw bush boxes appear as the best product, so the ones with the lowest volatility, the lowest standard deviation for children shield base and ripple clash. So, what does it mean? It means that these products were the one that moved the least, right? The ones whose return move the least from the mean, the average. Obviously, if something is not going to move a lot from the mean, you may expect it not to be the best performing ones when it comes to return, right? Which is why here we have a plenty of booster boxes as the best performing one using return as a metric. So it makes sense that if something is not volatile, you may expect it not to provide with great returns. So if you are afraid of risk, then these products might be the one for you. Will it happen again in the future? I don't know. I have no clue. If I knew, I would be rich and I wouldn't be sitting here with uh, over 30 degrees Celsius making a video. Return to risk. Now, this is our risk adjusted measure. So. Without further ado, uh, you can see the results once again from Future Strike onwards, uh, so up to till Silver Tempest, the booster boxes would have been the best risk adjusted performing product. Solution Base also would have been the best performing product when it comes to booster boxes. And then you have a mix of sleeved boosters and three pack blister for everything in between. So from Rebel Clash to Chilling Rain. So for Chilling Rain, as you can see, uh, three pack blisters actually more than double outperform using this measure uh, as metric sleeved boosters, right? Which is quite interesting. So once again, from Future Strike onwards, booster boxes were the way to go. Now, will it happen again in the future? You know the answer. Uh, but uh, I think this is interesting. Um, we can see that uh, it looks like uh, if we only care about returns, uh, historically, when it comes to Volume Shield, using this data, blah, 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 all the hypotheses already made, Booster boxes have been the way to go. Now, I'm not in any way, shape, or form saying that booster boxes will be with the way to go. Personally, I only buy booster boxes. Even when it comes to specialty set, I have a big problem. I don't buy them, or if I do, I only have two crowns and thirty Bs, which is compared to my portfolio, a very small percentage. Uh, which is why I just bought a case of Star Universe. Uh, I made a video yesterday, the other day, whatever. Uh, you can go watch it. I go over it why I made that choice into more detail. I don't like uh, something that is not a booster box. Now, one thing that would be interesting to see is how liquid this product are. For that, I do have some data when it comes to the European market with my bot, which uh, is very tool helpful when it comes to see what's going on in the market. I can look at market death, so on and so forth. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll link you to uh, this playlist, which will pop up uh, in the same spot as the other videos. Uh, sorry, but I am the sponsor of my channel, so I have to spam my videos. Uh, once again, uh, being honest. Uh, so I, I think it's interesting to see how 
uh, these item sells if there's any difference in liquidity now I can only make assumption I could say maybe booster boxes uh, sell the most uh, maybe they don't I don't know I don't freaking know I don't have a clue I won't say it but I think it's interesting if someone could come up with that data on uh, some good time spent and perhaps weekly data I think it'll be interesting uh, now to do that I think you would need access to the TG player API which is something I'm planning. So subscribe if you want to stay updated. Um, the plan is, I'll say bluntly, uh, once I do have a decent number of subscribers, which we're far off now, uh, but I'm being hopeful, uh, then I will try to knock at uh, TG Player door and ask him for API permission. So I can give you guys all data um, and uh, you can be happy, I'm happy, uh, everyone's happy. So. I think this is interesting to see. Uh, I'm not surprised that booster boxes uh, how perform when it comes to uh, returns only, because that's what people go after the most, right? And uh, you can make an argument if that's what people go after the most, you could find more liquidity there because you will find a larger audience. You you may find more demand. So that demand may indeed meet the supply if price goes up um, a lot. If it if it tends to move away from the average, which is what we've seen with the volatility. Uh, booster boxes are more volatile than the other products. Then perhaps mean then uh, demand is, is strong, right? Uh, and uh, that's, I mean, making a hypothesis, you need to test them. I don't know. Uh, but that's my, my thinking process. So I think it's interesting. You can make uh, many assumptions with this uh, data. Uh, I think we're almost at 20 minutes. So I'm gonna cut it short. Uh, I'm going live Sunday, be there. Join uh, 7 p.m. Uh, Central European time, 6 p.m. London, 1 p.m. Uh, New York, so Eastern time. So that being said, guys, um, I don't really know what to say. Uh, I talked too much already. Uh, I bored you. Uh, one thing I'll say is uh, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.